Thank you, Lawrence, for that kind introduction. What a warm welcome. It is such a wonderful pleasure to be back here on Francis McCauley's farm. <laughs> now, first off, I know that it's been a rough two weeks here in PEI and across the East Coast with Hurricane Dorian. But when the going gets tough, people in this province can always count on each other. Let's hear it for the cleanup crews, the first responders, soldiers, volunteers, and everyone who's been helping out their neighbors. My friends, we will keep being there for you as you rebuild and recover. And I know that Lawrence McCauley will be a part of that. After all, as PEI's longest serving MP ever, it's safe to say that people here know they can depend on him. I've worked with Lawrence for years now, and his dedication to the people who call Cardigan home and to the future of this province is incredible. Of course, we have no shortage of outstanding leaders here on the island. You've got Sean Casey, Wayne Easter, and Bobby Morrissey. Each and every one, a tireless leader who never stops standing up for PEI. Give it up once again for Lawrence, for Wayne, for Sean, and for Bobby. My friends, look around you. Look at what we've created. In 2015, you believed that we could make real change happen. You wanted a team that would work for you, not just for the wealthiest few. You wanted a team that cared about the next generation, not just the next election. A team that prioritized people, not power. And together, guided by our shared values, we built that team. With your enthusiasm and your ideas, your positivity and your energy, your hope and your hard work, we have built the most open political movement in Canada. Thank you, mes amis. <laughs> mes chers amis, cet automne, on est appelé à choisir quel genre d'avenir on veut bâtir ensemble. En 2015, après dix ans de politique conservatrice qui ne fonctionnait pas, l'économie canadienne était au neutre. La croissance de l'économie, la création d'emplois, la croissance des salaires, rien de tout ça ne bougeait parce que le gouvernement conservateur pensait que l'austérité et les coupures étaient la réponse à tout. Well, in 2015, Canadians chose a new team that was willing to invest in people and in their communities. We knew then, and we know now, that even though we live in the best country in the world, better is always possible. And while, of course, there's more work ahead of us than there is behind us, we've spent the last four years moving forward, and we've got the record to show for it. Poverty is way down, and job creation is way up. And it's because our team rejected the conservative cuts and austerity and chose instead to invest in the middle class and in people working hard to join it. People like Shauna from West Prince, whom I spoke with earlier today. She's raising five kids by herself, so she has a lot on her plate. But thanks to the Canada Child Benefit, Shauna now has the extra help her family needs. In her words, it was a lifesaver for me because the tax-free money she gets every month, well, it helped her buy a house. But we didn't stop there. We've invested in our veterans who've served this country so bravely, reopening the PEI Veterans Service Office along with eight others across the country that the Conservatives had shut. We've supported good middle-class jobs and communities from one end of this province to the other. I don't have to tell you that too many young people are leaving the island to look for work. Well, it's up to us to make sure they can stay in the communities they love with jobs they can count on. In fact, I was just in Charlottetown earlier this year to announce new funding to create over 150 jobs here in PEI and protect 300 more. Those aren't just numbers, though. 
Those are real people. Those people are your friends, your neighbors, and your kids. And your kids. <laughs> but liberals, that's not all we've accomplished together for Canadians. We also cut taxes for the middle class by raising them on the wealthiest 1%. We've been there for our seniors, from making the Canada Pension Plan even stronger to creating a new Minister of Seniors. And after Stephen Harper announced from Switzerland that he was raising the age of retirement, we were there for you. We restored the age of eligibility for old age security and the guaranteed income supplement from 67 back to 65. Because in a country like ours, Seniors shouldn't ever have to struggle to make ends meet. Now, my friends, we're going to continue making progress on this front. We've taken unprecedented steps to keep our water safe, with a plan to phase out harmful single-use plastics, something PEI's already leaning on as the first province to ban plastic bags. And you can be proud of that, Islanders. And we're investing in clean tech like wind, and projects that create new jobs right here on the island. These investments are making a real difference in people's lives all across the country. And this fall, Canadians once again get to vote for the kind of Canada they want to live in. We've all got a choice to make. Keep moving forward and build on the progress we've made, or go back to the politics of the Harper years. You see, Conservative politicians like to say they're for the people, but then they cut taxes for the wealthy, and cut services for everybody else. Other than deciding they might need to smile a bit more, Conservatives have no new ideas for Canadians. They still think that you can cut your way to prosperity. But as Canadians know well, that's the wrong approach to take. Let's not forget what Stephen Harper had to say about Atlantic Canada. What was it? A culture of defeat. Let me tell you about PEI and Atlantic Canada. It's a culture of honest, hard work. And Islanders and Atlantic Canadians deserve no less from their federal government. Honesty and hard work. That's why we chose to move Canada forward by investing in families, workers, and communities. By having faith in Canadians. En quatre ans seulement, les Canadiens ont créé plus d'un million de nouveaux emplois. On a négocié des nouveaux accords sur la santé avec les provinces et les territoires. On a réalisé des investissements sans précédent dans les soins à domicile et la santé mentale. Et c'est ensemble qu'on a accompli tout ça. Mes chers amis, au bout de compte, la politique consiste à servir les gens, à vous servir. Peut-être que vous venez de terminer vos études. Peut-être que vous venez tout juste d'arriver au Canada. Peut-être que vous travaillez pour donner à vos enfants le meilleur du monde. Peut-être que vous profitez de votre retraite. Peu importe les circonstances, vous méritez d'avoir un vrai plan pour l'avenir. We've done a lot together these past four years, but the truth is, we're just getting started. So, Islanders, you have an important choice to make. Will we go back to the failed policies of the past, or will we continue to move forward? That's the choice. It's that clear, and it's that important. That's why I can't wait to continue talking with Canadians over the next few weeks about our plan to keep moving Canada forward. So I'm asking you to stand with our Liberal team. I'm asking you for your help. Because of you, we won in 2015, and we need you now more than ever. So please, go talk to your neighbors. Get out and volunteer with Lawrence, or with Bobby, or Sean, or even Wayne. <laughs> Drive people to the polls. Make phone calls. Donate if you can, and most importantly, go knock doors. On October 21st, help Canadians choose a government that will fight with you and for you, for a stronger middle class, and for a better Canada for all Canadians. So from coast to coast to coast, let's stand as one voice and let's choose 
forward. Merci tout le monde. Thank you, Lord.